this is the part where I realize I look like crap. <laughs> Hi, sorry I look like crap. Um, wasn't thinking. But this is, um, so as you can tell I'm in front of my bookshelf, which means it's time for my top 10 books of 2015. Books are one of my favorite things, so let's get started. We're going to start with an honorable mention, and that is Girl Online by Zoe Sugg, aka Zoella of YouTube. Love Zoella, obviously. And this was one of those things where I was like, I didn't think it was going to be that great. It was just going to be a classic teen romance. Totally fine with those. But this one actually surprised me a lot more than I thought it would. I ended up giving it four stars out of five because the ending is what really did it. The whole beginning I was just like, it's a typical teen romance, and then the ending was just so good and so happy that I just, ugh, I loved it so much. It was such a cutesy rom-com. And also this cover is just beautiful. It's so girly and cute. So go and get it if you're really into teen romance and if you also love Zoe Sugg. Number 10. I'm not going to do that with my fingers all the time, sorry. I have The Longest Ride by Nicholas Sparks. Kind of sensing a theme of romance, I didn't mean to do that. Um, but I absolutely love Nicholas Sparks. I know a lot of people give him a lot of hate, um, which I can understand, I can see it, but I still love him. Like, his books are my guilty pleasure books, and so are his movies. I still have not watched this movie yet. But this book is probably one of my favorites out of all of his that I have read. I don't know what it was about it. I just, I think I loved the cowboyness of it. I've always wanted a thing with a cowboy. Never happened in life. But that's fine. Maybe one day. Still got time. But this was just a really great romance. And it definitely, of course, had the Nicholas Sparks touch and his classic something's going wrong that's going to tear the love apart. <laughs> Books are falling. Book number nine. A Thousand Miles to Freedom. Yeah, by Yinsen Kim. I think I pronounced that right. I hope I pronounced it right. Sorry if I didn't. But this is about this girl's escape from North Korea. And this is a true story. She talks about how her mom, her and her sister escaped from North Korea. And it took them years. I think it was a total of eight years till they finally got out. But she talks about how her life was like in North Korea and then everything that happened trying to get out of it and all the way until where she is now. And it was just such an interesting story. I went through a phase where I was really interested in North Korea. So I saw this book and was just like, let's do it. Picked it up and I really quite enjoyed it a lot. Number eight. Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling? I was never really a fan of Mindy Kaling. Um, I never really liked her. St it wasn't that I didn't like it. It was more just I just never watched it, so I never got into it. But I was going to meet her. So I bought her book, had her sign it to me, Ellen, that's, that's my name, in case you didn't know. So I read it, and I absolutely loved it. It was hysterical and so full of, like, wisdom actually. There was, there were some things that I highlighted that I was like, hmm, that's a good life lesson right there. I can't wait to read her next one, which I do have down here on my bookshelf. Super funny, really great. I enjoyed reading it. There you go, that's all you need to know. Number seven, I have Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. This was a book that was out of my comfort zone because I normally don't read scary books most of the time. Uh, in October, though, though, that's the month where I get really into, like, scary books. So I have a few, but just not many. And this was the one I decided to read in October. And I was surprised at how much I loved it. Like, I loved this book. This is about a guy who finds online that he can buy this suit that has a, a ghost soul attached to it. So it's a haunted suit. He gets it in the mail. Turns out... Um, it really is haunted and it's trying to kill him and the people he like knows and loves and whatever and it's him trying to survive and I want to read more by Joe Hill. I really enjoyed this writing. Everything was just surprising. I had no idea how it was going to end and that's always something good because I'm used to predictable endings. <laughs> Number six, I have 
Binge by Tyler Oakley. Um, I also got to meet Tyler Oakley, so he signed it as well. Wrote, I adore you, because it's true. I wasn't planning on putting any of the YouTubers books in my top 10, but I've read so many of them, and a lot of them actually really surprised me at how good they were. This was one of them. Look at the back of the book and look at the cover. Number one, cover and back of the book, amazing. I, I mean, I love Tyler Oakley, and I love his videos, and this literally just felt like I was watching a bunch of his videos. They had his voice to it. I was cracking up the whole time. Like, I was actually laughing out loud reading this book. Sometimes I was doing it in public and it was a little weird, but that's all right. At least it's from a good book. So this was just hysterical. It's basically just about his life and a bunch of stories that he hasn't told in his videos on YouTube. I don't really know what else to say about it. It was hysterical. If you're a fan of Tyler Oakley, definitely get this book. If you're not a fan of Tyler Oakley, still get this book because it will make you change your ways. It will. I just realized I think the lighting is a little too bright. My bad. That's probably better. There we go. Number five, A Work in Progress by Connor Franta. Another YouTuber with a book and another person that I got to meet and got to sign my book. Again, another one I was very surprised with. I was not expecting this to be anything spectacular or good. It's just about his life and how he came to be a YouTuber and all the stuff he's learned. But the two things I love the most about this, number one, the cover. I love how simple it is, but it's also just like gorgeous at the same time. Like you look, mm, I can't. But I also really loved that there were so many life lessons in this. Every chapter it ended with some sort of lesson and I was highlighting the crap out of this book. Like, every single page, I have something highlighted. Yeah. And I really enjoyed reading the chapters about him moving to Los Angeles, because at the time I was reading it, I had just moved to Los Angeles a month before. And so it's just like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. That's kind of what my mindset was. Huge fan of Connor Franta. After this book, I became an even bigger fan. So that's why it's really high up on the list. Number four, we have... P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This is the second book in the, what series is it? Oh, To All the Boys I Loved Before series. I really hope there's a third one. Um, but this is just a really cute teen book that, I guess it is a romance book, but it doesn't focus a lot on the romance actually too. There's a whole family values aspect to it, which I really love. It's a really great family with a great bond. I will explain the first book because I do not want to give away the synopsis of the second book, but basically the first book, to all the boys I loved before, I don't feel like pulling it out. It's about this girl, Lara Jean, who, when she has a crush on a guy, when she really likes a guy, loves a guy, she writes a letter to kind of help herself get over him, but like never sends the letter to the guy. And then one day, all those letters get sent out. It kind of gets a little crazy. Really cute, amazing contemporary read. Very surprised by how much I love this series. Number three, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. There are so many reasons to love this book. Number one, cover. Do you see how colorful this cover is? And the back? It's so cool. I love having this on my shelf because it just looks so good. Number two, this is a movie that I still have yet to see, but I've heard it's a really great movie. Obviously, it'd be a great movie because this is a great story, which is number three, great story. In case you don't know, this book is about a guy who his mom forces him to become friends with this girl who has cancer. And he's all like, I don't want to be friends with her, but then he ends up really becoming close friends with her as well as Earl helps them out. Earl and me is Greg. So Earl and Greg, they make movies and so they eventually decide to make a movie about her. Reason number four I love this book so much. This is another book that I was laughing out loud reading. It was so funny. And it ends up, reason number five I love this book, it ends up becoming um, very moving and uplifting. 
um, even though I don't think the author intended it to be that way, and it makes you feel a lot of things when it actually also makes you laugh at it, but in a good way. <laughs> check this book out. Maybe check the movie out. I still have to check the movie out, but yeah. Number two is not just one book. It is a book series that I'm actually still reading, but I had to put it on here because it's so good. And that is the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. This book series is fantastic. It is an adult sci-fi fantasy series and I really wish I understood how to explain the story premise because it is so out there and interesting that I have no idea even where to begin. There is so much character development mainly in the main two characters um, Vin and Eland because they all start off as like these meek people and they turn into like badass people and it's so amazing. I really wish I knew how to explain this book. All I know is you need to read it. Everyone needs to read this book series. And yes, they are pretty long and a little daunting, which is why it's still taking me a while to read them, but it is so worth it. Promise me you will read it, because I promise you it's worth it. And last but not least, book number one. My favorite book I have read in the year 2015 is the Book Thief by Marcus Susak. This, oh, this book. I oh, just want to hug it. Let me just give me a moment. I'm just going to cuddle it for a second. This, I've had this book on for a couple years and I just never picked it up and read it. And finally this year I was like, Ellen, you got to do it. You got to pick it up. You got to read it. And it was amazing. This book moved me to tears. I was crying so hard reading this book. This book, if you don't know, is about um, a girl, Liesl. She is living in 1940s Nazi Germany and she steals books. Not intentionally. Um, it just kind of starts off she's just borrowing and then it just turns into like actually just taking them and keeping them because she loves books so much and she loves reading and of course everything is going on around her with the war and the Nazis. The most interesting thing about this book that I think really made it extra special is the fact that the narrator is death. It, the story is told through the perspective of death. But it just goes through her life and all the things that she learns and the people that she meets and who she becomes as a person. It's just absolutely incredible. Please read it. You will not regret reading this book. And those are my top 10 books of 2015. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go read some of the, I would recommend reading all of them, but I know, I understand if you can't, but just read some of them. I also have my top 10 favorite movies of 2015 and my top 10 favorite TV shows of 2015. So go check those out. And I also put up some vlogs, so maybe down here I will put my most previous vlog that I put up. Um, and yeah. Bye guys!